So yesterday we have been uh, discussing about generalized Lager polynomial and uh, so we also given one uh, specific example uh, where it can appear in physics uh, hydrogen atom. So yeah. So. Uh, now let us uh, look at the third class, okay. So that is uh, Jacobi polynomial. So in this case what is the range? Minus 1 and 1, right? Because Infinite integral we have seen, semi-infinite is the generalized uh, lager and now we are talking about Jacobi which is minus 1, any finite intervals, okay, that can be put it into minus 1 and 1. So here the rho of x is 1 minus x power alpha, so this is the different alpha now, okay and 1 plus x power beta okay so you have two parameters here now alpha and beta okay so here alpha should be greater than minus 1 and beta greater than minus 1 so for a given alpha and beta you get a one row of x that row of x will give you a set of polynomials, they will be orthogonal and those, those polynomials will form a basis. So here sigma of x is equal to 1 minus x square. So now you can see uh, there are two parameters in this, in the earlier case there was only one parameter, there are two parameters in this case. So let us. Uh, so actually we will be discussing only uh, certain important polynomials, uh, I will not be discussing everything which is required for physics but some, some, some of them, some specific uh, cases. So Hermite polynomial you should be clearly looking at and the Lager polynomial is the one, uh, Lager polynomial is basically a generous Lager, Lager when you set alpha equal to, alpha equal to. Zero. Okay, so so uh, alpha equal to zero case. Okay, you just concentrate on alpha equal to zero case. Okay, so uh, uh, for other alpha because not part of the um, examinations. Okay, but it will be part of your life. Okay, so that is different. But for examination point of view, just look at the Hermite polynomial, Lager polynomial. Okay, because I will not be asking questions on uh, generalized Lager for a general alpha. Okay, so put alpha equal to zero thing you have to look at. So similarly here also there are not any alpha and beta but I have to tell you this because uh, you, you may come across for different alpha and beta in your later courses, okay. So but for examination purpose I will tell you what are the things you should specifically look at, okay. So, so here the general Roderick's formula what you can write is, uh, so this is denoted as uh, P and alpha beta. I think all of you must have uh, in your earlier uh, course, I think electrodynamics you must have came across PN, right? Yes or no? The BTEC students, did you come across PN function, polynomial? Hmm. Yes, right? Okay. So, so this is for a general alpha and beta, you one of the special cases you must have came across earlier, okay? So, now. So what is uh, Roderick's formula, Roderick's formula for given alpha and beta of x which is equal to minus 1 power n divided by 2 power n n factorial 
1 minus x power minus alpha 1 plus x minus beta obviously differential should be there into nth differential 1 plus x power n plus alpha 1 minus x this is 1 minus x then 1 plus x power n plus beta yeah so this is basically the general okay for general alpha and beta this is the uh, rotex formula so you can actually calculate so i just uh, uh, simply give the general formula for all these things okay you can look at the book uh, but I just want to quickly go through this because this you don't have to remember it you can take it from the books anytime okay so other one is minus 1 to 1 the orthonormality condition is basically dx 1 minus this is rho of x right orthonormality condition should have rho of x that is rho of x is equal to 1 minus x alpha 1 plus x power beta then uh, you should have a pn right so pn alpha beta x then pm alpha beta of x okay so this should be equal to uh, this is equal to uh, 2 power alpha plus beta plus 1 divided by gamma so now you see everywhere the gamma function is appearing now So this is basically the orthogonal relation. So you see the, the normalization constant is such a big uh, uh, expression. Okay. Yes, yeah. The screen very Yeah. The screen is very blurred. Uh, you cannot see anything on the board. Is it? One second. So this is the orthogonality relation uh, for uh, this uh, Jacobi polynomials for given alpha and beta. You can see the right hand side a uh, big expression. So uh, now what else we require is the differential equation. So let us now write down the differential equation. because sigma of x is 1 minus s square and second derivative plus beta minus alpha minus alpha plus beta plus 2 x d phi by dx so
So, this is second order polynomial, this is first order polynomial, it is a constant. But the constant depends on alpha and beta, even all these coefficients depends on alpha and beta. Yeah. So, the solution to this differential equation is basically that uh, uh, Jacobi polynomials for a given alpha beta. Okay. So, now actually we look, look at into a general case, uh, some specific cases. Okay. So, uh, so you have P alpha beta n of x. Now, this is a general Jacobi polynomial, right? For the interval minus 1 to 1 and whatever rho of x you have written there. Now, suppose alpha is equal to beta, suppose alpha is equal to beta which is equal to say let us take it as lambda minus half. Then what should be the condition of lambda? What should be the condition of lambda? Can you hear me? Greater than? Minus half. Minus half. So, lambda should be greater than, because earlier we said that alpha is greater than minus 1, right? Alpha and beta greater than minus 1, that is what we said earlier. So, obviously, uh, in this case, lambda should be greater than minus half, okay? So, when alpha equal to beta, the Jacobi polynomial, one special case is the Gegenbier uh, polynomial, okay. So, in this case, uh, your rho of x. So, what was the rho of x we have written earlier? 1 plus 1 minus x power alpha into 1 plus x power beta, right. So, if alpha is equal to beta, what will you get? It will be 1 minus x square because 1 plus x into 1 minus x, 1 minus x square power alpha, alpha is lambda minus 1 by 2. Sigma x anyway 1 minus x square. Okay. So, here also uh, I am not doing all alpha and beta. So, now let us just discuss what is interested in you per case. Okay, but, but one important thing I just want to talk because this usually denoted as C n lambda of x. Okay, C n lambda of x. So, this lambda, you can actually write down the generating function, Rodic's formula, because you have to just alpha, set alpha equal to beta is equal to lambda minus half in the uh, previous uh, expression, okay. So, here one important thing is, uh, we may discuss later on, lambda you can write it as uh, 1 by 2 d minus 1, where, okay, so suppose you write lambda is equal to 1 minus 2 d minus 1 where lambda is anyway greater than minus 1 by 2, but suppose d is an integer, okay. So, d is an integer, then d, now you are taking d is an integer, okay. Suppose you write lambda is equal to 1 by 2 t minus 1 and where d is an integer. So, d greater than or equal to 3, okay, you get certain solutions, right. So, in this case, lambda can be any number greater than minus half. Now, you are saying that lambda is equal to 1 by 2 d minus 1, where d is an integer and integer 1, 2, 3, etc. When d is greater than or equal to 3, you say that the solution, those polynomial solutions are spherical harmonics, okay. Uh, so, that is required uh, for your uh, certain calculations later on. So, I just want to mention that one here, one of the special spherical harmonics we may discuss later, okay. So, 
so in this now we will actually uh, look at two important polynomials okay that's all you require yeah yeah no 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 i am i'm not getting the condition okay so suppose you write down so, so lambda is any number greater than minus half okay now suppose you have lambdas such a way that lambda is equal to 1 by 2 d minus 1 for example you put d equal to 1 so d equal to 1 what is lambda minus half minus half so minus half is not possible right so d should be greater than 1 okay because lambda should be greater than minus half okay so d1 is not possible so d2 so d2 what is the value zero, zero. so d get to 2 you get you get one solution right so one solution for the jacobi polynomial where so uh, alpha is what will be alpha then because when d is equal to 2 lambda is zero so lambda is equal to zero alpha is minus half so alpha is equal to minus half beta is equal to minus half you get one jacobi polynomial okay that but this kind of polynomials one special cases are called uh, gegenbauer polynomials okay so now you put d equal to 3 okay you put d equal to 3 so when you put d equal to 3 what do you get 3 by 2 minus 1 what is the lambda value half right 3 by 2 minus 1 it is half right so that solution is called a spherical harmonics that's all but why it is a spherical harmonics and how it is because it has something to do with the uh, the kind of calculations or physics you are doing okay so uh, so i am not so i am because lambda is greater than minus half i can take some lambda which satisfy this equation that's all if in that case d is greater than or equal to 3 is satisfied then we call that those kind of polynomials as a spherical harmonics okay is that clear okay. yeah okay now let us look at very specific case okay which you have to study okay that is Chebyshev polynomial of first kind So now suppose you put uh, uh, alpha is equal to beta is equal to minus half. So what will be lambda? If alpha is equal to beta is equal to minus half. So Chebyshev polynomial is a another special case of Gegenbauer polynomial. What is that? What is that special case? alpha is equal to beta which is equal to minus half and lambda is equal to zero. zero okay so this is another special case of this one okay so there is a main one that is p n alpha beta then if alpha equal to beta then this one then if alpha equal to beta is equal to minus half lambda equal to zero Chebyshev polynomial of first kind okay so now we will be discussing now and this is denoted as tn of x tn of x this is actually uh, very much useful uh, even in uh, your uh, electronics okay uh, in avionics courses also uh, numerical solutions of differential equations okay uh, expansion of functions okay so this um, this polynomial is very much important okay very much needed so so we will be discussing uh, in detail this polynomial now so there is also a Chebyshev polynomial of second kind we will not be discussing that so what is the generating uh, what is the uh, generating function of uh, this Chebyshev polynomial first kind okay so we denote as f Chebyshev polynomial first kind okay so which is 
uh, obviously is a function of x and t which is equal to 1 minus x t divided by 1 minus 2 x t plus t square summation n is equal to 0 to infinity t n of x t power n. Okay. Yeah. So this is the generating function. So uh, there is a one more alternate uh, form of the generating function. One more generating function that will be useful. That is one minus t square divided by one minus two x t plus t square Generative function, you usually write it as a function of x and t, no? Because that is the series expansion of, uh, uh, because there is a series you formed using that polynomial tn of x, then t power n. So, it is a power series in t, okay? So, so even Hermite polynomial case, we have hn of x, t power n divided by n factorial, right? Then, okay? So, this is, a, you are writing, uh, uh, power series in T and coefficients are the polynomials. Okay. So, this also uh, another form of the uh, generating function. Okay. Now, uh, Roderick's formula Okay, so let us look at this. Can I say something about uh, Tn of minus x from this? Or can I write Tn of minus x as minus 1 power n Tn of x? Hmm? From this generative function, can I write that? Tn of minus x is equal to minus 1 power n Tn of x. Just think about that. Yeah? Yes, sir. So, how do you do that? So, if we put, so we place T with minus T. Hmm. Okay. So right hand side will become Tn of minus x. Hmm. And so minus of g to the power n. Hmm. And we can take minus 1 to the power n out. Okay. And so if we take the left hand side and right hand side, we can consider Tnx will be. Hmm. To be same as uh, um, minus 1 to the power n. Hmm. Tn of minus x. Okay. Okay. So what he's saying is, uh, if you if you substitute t is equal to minus t and x is equal to minus x in this, okay, the left hand side expression, this expression will not change when you when you take t to minus t and x to minus x. But the right hand side, this x will become minus x. Then this one is t minus t power n. That is minus one power n t power n. 
So, but this, because this should be equal to summation n is equal to 0 to infinity tn of x t power n, right. So, then you can compare the coefficient of t power n in both of the expression, you can get this, okay. So, so tn of minus x is equal to minus 1 power n tn of x. So, next is, uh, let us write down the rotex formula. Because you can substitute alpha is equal to beta is equal to minus half uh, in the original expression and get this, okay. So, we already written the general expression for the Jacobi polynomial. So, you have to just, sub, just substitute alpha is equal to beta is equal to minus half. So, what you get is 2 power n, n factorial divided by 2 n factorial 1 minus a square power half okay and the orthogonality relation where a0 is equal to pi and an is equal to pi by 2 for n greater than 1, okay, greater than or equal to 1. So, this is the orthogonal relation for the Chebyshev polynomial of first kind, okay. So, if I give you t0, you should be able to uh, find out t1, t2, t3, etc. Uh, using this phone number, okay. So, so we have this uh, Rodrix formula. So, from Rodrix formula, can you just find out what is t0 of x? What is t0 of x? Just give two minutes and uh, just put in. So find out T0 and T1. Just take two minutes. So you get. Uh, T0 of x is equal to 1 and T1 of x is equal to x and T2 of x is equal to 2x square minus 1 and T3 of x is equal to 4x cube minus 3x. So, you can uh, easily see from these expressions that when I put x is equal to cos theta, t0 of cos theta is 1 which is basically uh, cos 0 theta and t1 of x is equal to that means x is equal to cos theta you get cos theta itself. So, next is 2 cos square theta minus 1 is cos 2 theta and so on. So, you can actually get that Tn of cos theta is equal to cos n theta. You try to solve this uh, using the Rodix formula. See from the Rodix formula you can get this. So, when this is equal to this, 
uh, Tn cos theta is equal to cos n theta, you can show that Tn of Tm of cos theta is equal to cos n m theta which is equal to T n m of cos theta. So, this also you can easily solve. So, try to solve this using the Rodrix formula. You can see at least the specific cases are true. Other thing is suppose uh, uh, can you generate these things using the uh, gram schmidt orthogonalization. So, we have done some way of uh, for H0 the Hermit Ponov case H0, H1 and all we found right because we substitute H0 of X is equal to C0 and H1 of X is equal to A1X plus A0 of X, A0 into X, X0. So, when you substituted this and use the orthogonality condition to find out C0, A1, A0 and all right. So, instead of that suppose you take uh, first function is some 1, then second one is x, then x square, s cube, etc. Use the gram schmidt orthogonalization to generate T0, T1, T2, T3, etc. So, this is different, uh, slightly different from this because you are not considering uh, the combination, see, because instead of here you are only considering x. So, even the Hermit polynomial case you can do that, okay. So, this is actually discussed in the Vibalagrishna's book, okay. So, you just take uh, each function as this, then you subtract out the, uh, the component along the other direction, other uh, functions, okay. Then uh, you uh, generate the, the polynomials. So, so that two different ways you can do. So, either you can take the initial functions as this or you can consider as C0, then second one is uh, A1x plus A0, then third one is AB2x uh, square plus B1x plus B0, okay. Then third one is C3x cube plus C2x plus C 2 x square plus C, C 3 C 1 x plus C 0. See this is slightly different from this. So, you may have to do a different form uh, or I means you have to do the orthogonality uh, gram shift orthogonalization in a different way, okay. So, all polynomials, what are the formula, uh, polynomials we taught so far? All those polynomials try to solve using either this method or this method, okay. Okay, so we will discuss the remaining uh, basically the uh, Lechandre polynomial, one of the important thing we have to discuss in the next class and also associate like our, uh, Lechandre and uh, uh, um, uh, spherical harmonics and all. After that we will get on to the probability theory.